Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into texture clarity and dehaze in Lightroom. Along the way, we're also going to discuss sharpening and contrast as well. We're going to begin our discussion by me demonstrating to you what each of these sliders do to gray bars. Because I believe once you see how the sliders affect gray bars, you'll get a better idea what the sliders actually do, and then you'll be better able to effectively use them on a real image. Now, you'll notice the gray bars. We have, far, we have black on the far left, white on the far right, varying shades of gray in between. If we look at the histogram, you'll notice that there are four large spikes. Those four large spikes represent the varying shades of gray between black and white. Black and white isn't on the histogram because it's just off the histogram. Absolute black is just off the histogram to the left, and absolute white is just off the histogram to the right. If I hover over the little triangle, you'll see that a red overlay appears where absolute white is. And if I hover over the triangle on the left, a blue overlay appears where absolute black is. Now, what you'll find is all of the sliders are going to be talking about texture, clarity, dehaze, contrast, and sharpening will only affect the shades of gray between absolute black and absolute white. They won't affect absolute black and absolute white at all. Let's start out with contrast. Don't even look at the image. Just look at the histogram. Again, we have these four large spikes. This spike is this shade of gray. This spike is this shade of gray, and so on. If I go to the contrast slider and move it to the right, what you'll notice is this spike barely moved, and the other two spikes that are to the left of it moved more towards black, and the spike that was to the right of it moved more towards white. So that's indicating the lighter gray got lighter, and the darker grays got darker. And if we look at the actual image, with this being the middle gray, that's this spike that barely moves, you'll notice that this lighter gray got lighter, and the two darker grays got darker. That's all contrast does. It makes the lighter grays a little lighter, it makes the darker grays a little darker. And really, that's kind of the definition of contrast. It makes the lighter a little lighter, and the darker a little a darker. And also, I want you to just take note of, it's affecting the entire gray bar equally. Meaning, this gray bar that is next to the lighter gray bar, this edge next to it, gets affected the same exact way as the opposite edge. So they're being affected equally. And that's important because the other gray bars are a little more nuanced. I'm sorry, the other sliders we're going to be demonstrating are a little more nuanced. For example, if I go to dehaze, you'll notice that the side of the gray bars that are near a lighter gray bar, the side gets darker, not the entire gray bar, just the side. So this gray bar, for example, this side of it to the right that is near this lighter gray bar, this side will get darker. This lighter gray bar, the side of it that is near absolute white gets darker, and so on with the other ones. So if I go to dehaze again, you'll see. So you'll see how it's not really affecting the left sides of the gray bar or the towards black side of the gray bars, just the sides that are towards the brighter shades. They're getting darker. So it's kind of interesting how it affects the gray bar compared to contrast where the entire gray bar, in this case, gets lighter. These two gray bars get darker and it doesn't affect black, white, or medium gray. The dehaze will affect medium gray, but it doesn't affect black and white either. Now, clarity, on the other hand, it's kind of the opposite of dehaze. What you'll find is the side of the gray bar that is next to a darker gray bar gets lighter. Isn't that interesting? It appears to me that the right side of the gray bar that is next to a lighter gray bar is getting darker, but I don't think that, I think that's an optical illusion because of the way our eyes and brain work. I think it's actually just making the side of the gray bar that is near a darker gray bar, lighter. I'm going to reset this. Okay, so it's kind of opposite of dehaze. 
Now, texture is a little more uh, difficult to see what is going on with gray bars. If I move this to the right, you'll notice that something's happening, happening right at the edge. So let me zoom in. I'm going to hold the command key on my Mac control key on a PC, and we'll zoom in to like right in here so we can get this edge. And then we'll take texture to the right. You'll notice that the dark part of the gray bar, the darker gray bar at the edge is getting darker. The lighter gray bar at the edge is getting lighter. So it's adding contrast just to the transition, just to the edge. And you can see how it does it. It's kind of a gradual thing. So it it's just starts getting darker, 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 darker. Then it's at its darkest right at the edge. And then going the other way, it starts getting lighter, 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 lighter. And it's at its lightest right at the edge. So you can see how that is getting the edges more defined. So texture is kind of a sharpening. It's kind of sharpening the edges. And that's what it does in a real image. And we'll demonstrate that in a minute. Now, if I stay zoomed in, actually, and I go to the detail tab and I go to the sharpening slider, you'll see that this is more precise. Whereas with texture, it was gradual. It goes gradually lighter. And then going this way, it goes gradually darker. You'll notice with detail, it's very abrupt. It's just this right at the edge, and the lighter gray bar gets lighter right at the edge. The darker gray bar gets darker, so it adds contrast right at the edge. But you'll also notice that if I move sharpening too far to the right, we get this haloing coming out. You have to be careful when you sharpen with the sharpening slider because you'll get haloing often, and you can see it's doing it even on gray bars. But you can see how that's a little more precise. There's not a gradual, like it's not affecting as many or it's yeah it's not affecting as many pixels as texture will texture will affect more pixels on an image for example if i go to a real image now let me zoom back out this image here and if i zoom in around here now you'll notice i'm zoomed into like his um eyebrow area his eyelashes his eye if i go to the basic tab and i go to texture and move it to the right Obviously, the darker part that is near a lighter part is going to get darker. The lighter part that is near the darker part will get darker. But you'll notice it's going to affect his skin and his pores quite a bit as well. So if I move this to the right, you can see how it's affecting not only the eyebrows and his eyelashes and the veins in his eye and his iris. It's affecting those tiny little uh, detail areas of his pores. Now, knowing what we know about sharpening, where it doesn't affect as many pixels, and I reset that, if we go to detail and I move sharpening to the right, you'll notice that it doesn't affect the skin quite as much, but it is affecting the eyebrows, the real dark eyebrows against the light skin, and the blood vessels that are darker, it affects those. So it's a little more nuanced. Again, if I go too far, though, it starts haloing. You can see that horrible haloing effect that's happening. So you got to be careful with that. So it's a little more subtle, but still effective. So quite often, when you have smaller detail, um, you'd like to use both texture and sharpening. And personally, the way I like to do it is I will go with texture first. So I'll go and move texture first till I look at it and it's like affecting the skin a little bit too much and then just back it off so it's not affecting the skin. Then you could go to sharpening if needed. You don't sometimes don't even need to do it, but you could go to sharpening and push that up. Now, of course, I'm showing you global adjustments. We could refine this even further by using masking and local adjustments. So I could just use texture, say, on his eyebrows or on his hair and stuff like that or on his iris. So you could really refine it that way. But using the global adjustments right now, I'm better able to show you what each of these sliders will do. So again, in a real world situation, what I would probably do is just go to masking if available. If something can't get masked, what I would do is I would move texture first. Then I would move the sharpening slider afterwards. That's the order I would do it because I feel that gives me the best um, 
the best sharpness that doesn't halo because you're not, you don't have to, if you move texture first, you don't have to move the sharpening slider as far. So you'll avoid haloing and it's a little more nuanced. So you'll sharpen just very more, like more specific parts of the scene and the image. Now, if we go to this image that is super hazy, knowing what we know about contrast, how it will take something that is lighter than medium gray and it will make it lighter and something that is darker than medium gray and make it darker, we know then that it will rid some of the haze here because it will make the lighter parts a little lighter, the darker parts a little darker. It's not going to touch medium gray at all. So if I come in and move contrast to the right, you can see how it eliminates some of the haze. Again, remember what Clarity did? It made the part that was of a gray bar that was near a darker gray bar, it made the part of the gray bar that was near that darker gray bar lighter and the part, you know, just going across. So so technically, that would probably help with de dehaze this as well. And if I move that to the right, and you can see it does. Now, dehaze, on the other hand, it made the part of the gray bar that was near a lighter gray bar darker. So if I move this to the right, you can see what that's really getting rid of the dehaze. So more specifically, what is happening here, if I zoom in, we have this darker area right here next to a lighter area. It's not going to make the lighter area lighter, but it will make that darker area darker. See? Conversely, with clarity, it's going to make the lighter area lighter, but it won't make the darker area darker. So can you see how it's making this rock face, the lighter parts, lighter? Whereas with dehaze, it's making the darker parts darker. And contrast will make lighter parts or lighter grays than medium gray lighter and darker grays that are darker than medium gray darker. So usually on an image like this, what I prefer to do is go to clarity first, move it to the right, then move dehaze after. So if I reset these and see, like this, I go to clarity first. So making a little, the lighter parts a little lighter then go to clarity or to dehaze to make the darker parts a little darker. And then I bounce off these. And sometimes I could touch it up or re refine it a little bit with contrast. So you could see how that worked pretty well. Now, just to hammer home the portal point a little more about sharpening and haloing and stuff like that. We come in on this bird here and I zoom in like here in his feather detail. And again, typically I would probably use masking for this and just mask for the bird. But for the sake of this uh, demonstration, let's just use global adjustments. If I go to detail and I want to sharpen it, right? I start moving it to the right. You'll see how it, it starts to really over sharpen it. And it starts to get this kind of weird look to the feathering. Uh, so you got to be careful. Again, what I would probably do is I would go to texture first and push that up, and you'll see what it's doing because it's affecting more pixels. And just to show you it's affecting more pixels, watch the bird. See, that's affecting pretty much the entire bird. And if I go to detail and move this up, it's affecting the finer feather detail more so than anything else. So you can see it's kind of affecting right in here like in here, in here, but it's not affecting a lot of anywhere else compared to texture. So again, what I would do is I would go to texture first. I would move this up till I like what it's doing. I like what it's doing in here. Don't want to go too far. If I go too far, it starts looking bad in here. I don't like that. I'll just move it enough like that. It looks pretty good. And then I would go to detail and I would move sharpening just to get that extra bit of sharpening in here. And that looks pretty good. But again, um, 
the way I would the way I would do this so it doesn't affect the uh, the piece of wood it's on or the background adversely is I would go to masking. I would mask for the subject. And once it finds the subject, and it did, I would go to effects. I would move texture up. It's about there. It looks pretty good. And then I would go to detail, and I would move sharpening up. That's the way I would do it. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of what each of these sliders do and then how to utilize them. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.